From this moment on, you will now be known as Sharkbait. Sharkbait! Ooh ha ha! Welcome, brother Sharkbait! Sharkbait! Ooh ha ha! Enough for the Sharkbait! Sharkbait! Ooh! Bop! What's up, everybody? This is D from Brooklyn. And as promised, man, I'm going to give you some quick, educational, hopefully fun, and a little bit of intuitive update on the container pond. Now, the first thing I want to mention is that starting a fish tank is like anything else. What you put into it is what you will get out of it. So the more time and energy you put into researching something before you actually jump in, the more likely you're going to enjoy the outcome. So with that being said, as I mentioned, this tub has been quite the hobby for me for the past few years. I started out with smaller tubs. Um, rubber preferably i tried tanks i had bad luck with glass because glass conducts heat and cold very quickly i apologize for jamming the camera around but i'm trying to get the best angle on the fish as they make their way through the tub so if you don't pick up anything from this video is preferably a heavy gauge rubber and when i say rubber i mean plastic heavy gauge because as you fill a tub up, the higher you go, the more pressure is going to put on the sides. This is a six-foot trough, which is usually something used for feeding animals. It's 70 gallons. I have tubs that are as small as 20 gallons. Heavy. Don't get anything just rubber because it's rubber. Make sure that the top half is pretty thick because it will bow out. And when it bows out because it is hot and cold outside due to the changing temperatures you are more likely to end up with a crack so keep that in mind when you get in your tub now as for the fish those of you that have been following me know that i have quite an interesting assortment of fish i have added some new fish and uh that brings me to the species you want to put in the tub you want to make sure that they are weather tolerant more likely species that do not require a heated tank, such as goldfish, minnows, quite a few tetras I've learned are pretty cold tolerant because it gets cooler at night. And they are quicker to the, the adaptation of outdoor parameters. Um, you want to keep it out of direct sunlight. Um, how I do that is because I have a nice little garden area i'm gonna move the camera for a minute hopefully you don't jostle around it is nicely shaded by my grapevine very well shaded and i've added quite a few vegetables and fruit vines such as my raspberries strawberries and uh look how long that is look at this it's reaching towards the fence i gotta kind of push that up <laughs> I have lilies, daffodils, and things to keep it interesting. And also, if you're going to feed your tub, one thing you'll learn is still water is a breeding ground for mosquitoes. So if you're not going to have a pump in it, this has solar powered pumps. I'm going to pause and take this off the tripod for a second. This system is run by four solar powered pumps. I had to expand my trellis up there for my solar panels. One, two, three, and four <laughs> here. So there is no electricity running to this trough. And if you want to see the manufacturer, here is the manufacturer. It is Bell & Country. I got it off of Craigslist a few years ago. Um, and that is it. So basically, if, getting back to the main subject, Make sure that the water is moving. Those pumps move my water throughout the day. At night, the water is still. But if you want to prevent mosquitoes, they sell a mosquito disc, which is not harmful to aquatic animals and plants. That will keep the mosquito population under control. Now, the second thing you want to keep in mind in regards to wildlife and effect on your pond, this is my screen. This is not just screen. This is chicken wire. I used one by ones, which you can get at Home Depot for like $2 a piece. And they are hinged. 
The reason that they're hinged is because I'm in and out of this tub all the time. I didn't want something that I had to keep sitting on the floor because when you sit it on the floor, you tend to track dirt and leaves back into the pond. And at some point it always falls and gets damaged. So I wanted to make it as easy as possible to lift and close, which I can show you. I have a little hook here. I can lower it and it keeps any squirrels and birds. And believe me, I have had birds literally sit and peck to try to get through this if you have regular screen it is a matter of time till something falls through it also keeps dragonflies and other insects out because of the fine mesh screen i have just patio screen you can get patio screen you could even get a sliding patio screen door which usually you can get at home depot for like 20 30 dollars and just attach a little hinge and you'll have a screen to keep keep the bugs out but also if you have things like killies or or very easily startled fish as i do and i'm going to show you how i hook this on it keeps the fish from jumping out <laughs> if you haven't had a fish outside jump out you haven't had fish long enough because eventually all kind of noises, birds trying to get them, whatever cats running by, they eventually try to jump out. So keep that in mind. Oh, look quick. Um, while you're looking, there are fry in here. I don't know if you can see that. I will zoom in. So when you've done everything right and established a cycle by setting your water out in the UV rays of good old mother nature sunshine let it cycle i have leaves in there i have rocks in there I have dirt in there you can see from the breakdown of the leaves it creates mom the fish lay their eggs in the mom they like to nest in it it is just really really natural and makes your life so much easier but the screen will keep the bugs out and keep the fish in while controlling insect growth in your pond now Speaking of cycle, you'll see I've had fish in here. That doesn't mean I just pour water in here. This is rainwater. I did it the hard way. I let it fill with rainwater over the course of weeks. <laughs> and it doesn't take long if you have a big enough area for water to uh, get uh, into the tub as this six foot does. But the rainwater, best thing for the fish, no pollutants other than, I guess, acid rain if you want to go all into it and plants you can see my homemade pots if you haven't seen how i make my homemade pots you can check it out on youtube i show you how to make these out of soda bottles um soil and gravel so check those out the more plant life you have in there the more biodiversity you have in there the more likely your fish are to adapt really quick and get settled in and if you do everything right you will end up with baby fishes this tank is running two months now. I started it in May and that is June and I got fry already. <laughs> so, you know, you're doing something right. But the goal of these videos is to inspire you, inspire you. If this doesn't inspire you, I don't know what will. So, uh, yes, my fish are spawning. I have some new additions. I'm going to put a picture up in the right hand corner now. Um, I'm going to put the name of the supplier. I got some brilliant species. If you guys aren't familiar, my Monrovii Achilles that I've been keeping in the house. I've moved some outside and I'm hoping that they will adapt to these living conditions. Look at this humongous snail over here. Uh, there's such a glare you can't see it, but right there it is. That dot is a humongous snail. And here's another one. Humongous snail. So that is the fun and the hobby of seeing what will adapt, seeing how it just does well without you. The beautiful thing about having mom and leaf litter and so much in the tank is rarely do I have to feed these fish because as you can see the fry will nibble 
on the little natural plant matter and mold that is in the water column. So all I do is add a little really, really finely crushed up flakes. As you can see here, it's really fine. You can't even tell I've added anything. And they pretty much feed themselves. You'll see them digging through the mold. If you look real close, they dig through the mold and they pick through the leaf litter. These are naturally herbivores. The Daniels even uh, pick up through it. have celestial pearls in there. have long fin leopards from last year that have grown. You can see they're pretty much full size. I'm trying to get a snapshot of the Achilles swimming by. But anyway, you get the gist. So, good water. Patience. Natural biodiversity. And a little bit of patience and a little bit of studying. I'm... No stranger to watching some of you guys' videos. I watch quite a few of your videos. Sometimes you come up with really good ideas that inspire me to come back to, to the tub and try them out. So share your information because sharing is caring. Um, take your time. Enjoy the hobby. If you find yourself really, really working hard, you're not enjoying it. You're not likely to get anything good out of it when you don't feel you're enjoying it. So enjoy what you do. Take your time. Um, give a blessing, get a blessing. Look at these guys. These are three big females there. Look at them all big like houses. Let me focus here. They are big as houses. I mean, I can imagine how many fry I'm going to have by the end of the season just in these bright orange mollies alone. There's a sailfin in there somewhere. Now I got a lot of fry and I'm expecting a dozen more now that the temperature is rising let's see what the temperature is I have my little floating thermometer jingy here oh yeah let me see I don't want to drop my phone but it is in the almost 80s it's in the mid 70s about 77 it's in the green baby what a difference a couple of warm days makes so uh yeah, look at that snail. Look how fast it went up the wall. I have the serious infestation of snails. I kind of give up even trying to catch them. <laughs> I kind of give up. But this is it. You can do it. You have knowledge. You have the time. You have the patience. Enjoy it. This is D keeping it short and simple. I hope you guys share your videos. If anybody's trying to set up a tum, a tum, a tub, <laughs> shoot me a comment in the below area because I'd love to go over to your channel. Share them on the D from Brooklyn Aquariums, Aquatic Hobbyists of the World, Saltwater and Freshwater Facebook page. Sharon is Cameron once again. Love peace and hair grease. I'm going to sit back and enjoy the hobby. I hope those little tips and Words of inspiration lead you guys to give it a shot. Cuz it's real, really well worth it. I want to say a lot of the fish that come out of this tub at the end of the year, I donate to my local uh, senior centers or schools where they have aquariums set up, where they can learn and set up and maybe inspire the future hobbyists of tomorrow. So if you can do a good thing, do it. I'm going to be out on that note. Love, peace, and hair grease, everybody. See ya.